Hi everyone, welcome to WeTV. My name is Chris, it's great to see you today. And today, I'm sure you know, it's I Can Make. And I'm so happy that all of you love making things as much as I do. It's so much fun when you make things, especially when you make gifts for your friends and family, yeah? And today, do you know what we're going to make? Well, of course you don't know what we're going to make. I didn't tell you yet. We're going to make um, what are we going to make? Oh, we're going to make a book. A book. A book? Oh, wait, maybe more like, yeah, look at that. It's a handmade book. And as you can see, there's some leather on the outside. And wow, lots of interesting pictures. Now, we can do a lot of things when we make a book ourselves, but what I'm going to show you today is just how to make the basic book and then you get to decorate it however you want to. Okay, let's see what we need for our book. Well, we're going to need some heavy bond paper. You can't use the paper you use for schoolwork. No, that paper is very thin. Heavy bond paper is a lot thicker. And as you can see, we think that you should use paper between 150 and 180. That's a good heavy paper. All right, what else do we need? We need some cardboard. We're going to use the cardboard to make a template. I'll show you that later. We're going to use some linen thread. Linen is a very nice material. It's very soft, but it's also very strong. It's a little bit stronger than cotton. And the linen thread is thicker than normal thread. Okay, so linen thread, we're going to use that. We're going to use some glue. I'm sure you have glue around. If you like making things as much as I do, you always have glue around, right? And we're going to use some leather. Now, you might have some scraps of leather that you want to use around the house, or you might want to buy some leather, either online or in a store. You could use a lot of things. Uh, if you had some old jeans, you could use the jeans as a cover for the book. And uh, we'll talk more about the covers in a little bit. But that's what we're putting on the outside of the book is the leather, okay? And of course, we're going to use some tools whenever we're making things. Now first, we're going to use either scissors or shears. You might even use both. What are shears, you might ask? Well, shears are used for cutting fabric. So you might want to use the shears for cutting the leather. We're going to use a large sewing needle. Maybe you have a needle at home for sewing. If you have a hole in your clothes, you can sew it. But we need a very big needle for making our book because we're going to sew our book together. Let's go through our steps one time. First, we will cut the paper to size. You want to know how big a book you are going to make before you get started. That way you can cut the paper to a smaller size if you need to. Today, I'm not going to be cutting my paper. I'm going to use the full size to make my book. Second, we will fold the paper in half and we want to make a very strong crease. We're going to fold that very tight, as very tight as we can, okay? Then we're going to create a template from the cardboard. The template will show where the holes will be in every piece of paper because we need those holes to line up on every piece of paper. They have to be the same, so we will create a template. We're going to poke holes in all of the pages, all the paper. Then we will group the pages into sections. You're going to put about four or five pages in one section, and then however many sections you want in your book. Next, we can stitch the sections together. We will glue the bindings and let it dry. We will cut the leather to the size of our book, and I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. And then last, we will glue the leather into the book. And then, of course, you can decorate your leather if you want to. I have a very special piece of leather that is so beautiful. I'm not even going to decorate the outside of it when I'm done. But I'm sure you can't wait to see that, right? It's going to be great. And now we're ready to go. So let's go. 
Okay, before we start, I want to show you what we're going to be doing. So this is a sample of a book that I've made. I've already stitched it together here, and you can see the different sections. So it's very simple. This is a completed book. Now, I didn't use leather. What I did was I used a plastic book cover that you can find in many stores. You would use them for your school books. And then I covered that with wrapping paper. So if you don't want to use leather or you don't have leather easily available, you can see that you can get a lot of different materials to cover your books, okay? All right, let's go. Okay, so first thing we need to do is fold our paper. So I've got some paper here, and we're just going to go through and fold it all in half. So I want to make sure I line up the edges very well. And it's important that this edge be as flat as possible. So I'm going to use this little tool. Uh, some people like to call this a fishbone. If you don't have a piece of wood like this, you notice it's curved. So that actually helps uh, me make a nice flat piece of paper. You could also use uh, your scissors. Use this part of the scissors to make it flat. Uh, you could also use uh, maybe a hairbrush or a hair comb. There's a lot of things that you can use. But the most important thing is just to get this to be as flat as possible. Okay? And then we're just going to do this many, many times. As many pieces of, as many pages as you want in your book. So we're going to put four pages together to be a section, and then we're going to sew all the sections together. So right now I've got three, and this will make four, and then I've got my first section. Whew, the final piece, yay. Okay, all the paper is folded, and now we want to create our cardboard template. So I've got my paper here. Now I've got a piece of cardboard. It's a little big, so let's cut it down to size. Put a nice dent there so I know where to cut it. Okay, I don't need that. And then, don't need all this cardboard, but I'm just going to fold the cardboard in half. And then I want to see how does it look there. Good. And good. All right. Now, it's important when you have your template that you mark which part of the template is the top, because you always want the tops of the pages to be the same, and that way the holes will all line up. If one time you're using this as the top, and then later you're using this as the top, the holes in the pages may not line up. So this is how we're going to do it. All right, so I'm gonna put a little T here to show me that this is the top. And now I'm ready to make my holes. I'm going to use the big needle, the same big needle that I'm going to use to make the book. And what I want to do is just put two holes about one centimeter down from the very top. So go one centimeter and make a hole, and then go one centimeter and make another hole. And then we'll go to the middle, and we put two holes somewhere in the middle. Doesn't have to be precisely the middle, but should be near the middle. And then one centimeter away, we make the next hole. And then we want to be near the bottom. So again, put a hole and then a centimeter and the other hole. Okay, and this way, when I put my page here, I line up the top with the top edge and I'm going to poke holes in all of these places. So I want to hold the paper and then poke a hole and a hole 
and a hole, and a hole, and a hole, and a hole. All right, and so now I've got holes in my book, and I'm going to poke holes in all of these pages. We're almost done. This is getting down to the last section, the last group of four pages. Now I decided to make this book with 32 individual pages. That means that my book will have 128 pages. That's a big book. Now you may not want so many pages in your book and that's up to you. As you can see, first I make my holes with a template, and now I'm just going to go through and make sure the holes are big and easy. And there we are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sections of four. Wow, what a big book we're going to make. And now we can go ahead and start stitching all of these sections together. Okay, so I've got my uh, linen thread and I'm ready to start stitching my book together. But it's not quite that simple because I need to use one thread for the entire book. Well, how can I be sure that I have enough thread for the entire book, right? That's the good question. So what we need to do is first, I usually take the thread and measure up against the book and then I want to take however many sections I have. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And you know what? I'm gonna add two just for good measure. One, two. Let's cut that. Okay, let's thread the needle. And unlike regular sewing where we double the string, we just want to make a knot right at the needle because we're going to use the single string. We don't need to double it. The string is very strong. And if we doubled it, well then we'd actually have to take twice as much string as I just counted. So I'm just going to single the string and make a good strong knot here. Make sure it's tight. All right, and I'm ready to get started. And of course, like I said, we have to make sure all the tops are the same. So I've lined all of my tops up here. If these holes are one, two, three, four, five, six, we're gonna go out hole number one. And we're going to go in hole number two. And then we go out hole number three. This is why it's so important that all these holes are lined up and that they're all the same. Now we go in number four. And out number five. In number six. And then I have to go back out number five again. But before that, I want to make sure that I have a knot at the other end of my string because I have to pull all of this string back through the whole book. So I'm going to put a knot down here. I'm gonna make it pretty big. Okay, now as I've gotten all the string to the very end, because we have to make sure the string has all come through. Now you notice I'm pulling the string this way and along the edge of the book and I wanna pull it and make sure it's tight, okay? So I want that string to be pretty tight here. And now I'm ready to go back out this hole, which we said was number five. And once 
I've got this out. This is probably why it's a good idea not to do quite this big a book. Usually four or five sections is good. Eight sections, I think I'm biting off a lot. Okay, so now I'm here and I'm ready to move to the next section. So again, I need to keep this tight. I get my next section. And when I do my next section, so before we came out number one, now we want to come out number six. Well, how do we come out number six? Well, to do that, we actually have to start by going in number five, which is good because five aligns with five. So I go in number five. And I'm going to pull all the string back through. And then I just repeat my pattern again, but I'm starting at this end. And again, because this is where the two sections are coming together, I want to make sure that this string is tight. So I'm going to pull here, make sure that's good and tight. And then as I go in number five again, going to keep this good and tight. Okay, so now this is tight and I'm ready to do the rest of these holes. Remember, it's always good to have too much string instead of too little string. Too little string is a problem. Too much string can just be cut at the end. Also, don't be in too much of a hurry. If you end up with a knot in your string, that can be a big problem. And back out hole number, well, technically two. It's important to remember that this is hole number two, because remember, this is the top of my book. Even I've turned it around, I have to remember that because these are all lined up at the top. If I line them up differently, big problem, big, big problem. All right, make sure that's tight. All right, so now that we've got to the last hole, what I want to do is bind these together. So I'm going to go through this one here and pull this. So I went through the first one and now I'm going to go under the one that I just made and go back through the first one. And this way, these two sections are connected together. Okay. So now that we've done that on this one, when we do the next section, I'll put it here, and then the next section, I'll do the same thing on all the bindings, and so on and so on. So every time we add a new section, we're gonna loop the thread back around the stitching for the other sections, okay? That's pretty important. Let's keep going. Okay, let's get this last one going. Remember, this is actually a pretty easy project. The most important thing is to take your time, take your time, try to keep the binding nice and tight. And as we see here, I'm going to make sure I go back around this whole thing here. Now, if you were making a really big book, well, maybe you would only bind like every four together, every four together. I don't know. I'm not really a book binding expert. I just know this works. I was taught this by a very nice lady from France. So you can see, yeah, I've got too much string. Better to have too much string than too little string. See, as you see, all of these have been gone through every time to make sure that my book is as tight as possible. And here we are at the last one. And so you might ask, hey Chris, how do we finish this? What are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna make a knot. Let's go back around here. Let's 
All right, I've got way too much string. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off. And now our book is pretty much ready and we're going to apply some glue and let it set. All right. Okay, so now we're ready to glue our binding together. We're going to apply glue over all of these threads and along the back of the book here to bind it together. We don't want glue getting in between the sections because we don't want them getting stuck together. So we want to make sure we just apply glue to the back edge. And then we're going to use something nice and heavy and set it down on top of the book to let it dry and really press down and keep all the pages together. Okay? Let's get going with our glue. I'm going to put the glue in kind of globs here. And now I, I could use my fingers, but I'm going to use a paintbrush. And the main thing, I really want to make sure these threads are well covered with glue. And I need some more, so I'm going to go ahead and just put some more glue on here. Okay, and now we're ready to set our book down and let it dry. All right, so now I've got this, I put this right on the edge and I put my heavy thing right on top of it and I'm just gonna set it here and let it dry. All right, everybody, now our glue has dried. It took a couple hours. I don't know, your glue might take a little bit more time. It might take a little less time. If you want to be safe, let it dry overnight. And now we're ready to do our next part, which is to cut the leather. And as you can see, I have a very beautiful piece of leather that we're going to use for our book. Now, the important thing is that you can't just measure the length here and double it to be the size of the cover because the cover also has to go along the back. So if I was just to do two of these, it would be here and then here, right? I'll put this little pin. But what it's actually going to be is more like here and then this part and then here. And look at that. The pen was here, but I actually need this much more. So it's important that we truly measure it. And the best way, really, and this piece of leather happens to have a nice 90 degree corner. So I'm going to use that and I'm going to put my book up against that corner, and up against this edge, and then just fold it over and make sure of how it's going to look. Now I can put a mark here to tell me where to cut. And I'll put a mark at the bottom to show me where to cut there. And a mark over here. Okay. I'm ready to cut my piece of leather. If you're using a thick leather, you're going to need very good scissors or shears. Okay, we've got our leather. Can set this off to the side. And now, we are ready to glue our book together. It's going to be beautiful, don't you think? Okay. You may think, Chris, what is the secret to gluing this together? Not really anything in too difficult. But first, we're going to apply our glue. And I like to apply it near the edges, not too, too close. And then, of course, around the middle. I'm going to go ahead and rub this in with my fingers, because I like to rub things with my fingers. I do not want any glue along this back part. And that's important. If the glue gets there, it will stick to the binding. We don't want the glue to stick to the binding, because the leather should not stick to the binding. Okay, so now I can take this and gently place it where it's going to be. I'm going to push it down firmly. And here's a neat little thing I learned. 
we go down to this page and we insert a dry piece of paper in between the book and the page that's stuck to the cover. And the reason why we do that is we don't want the pages to, the glue to bleed through the paper. And so this extra piece of paper will make sure that there's no damage to our book. And now we can do the other side. Again, I'm gonna make sure of the length. And the reason why I'm rubbing this glue in, you could use a paintbrush, of course. The reason why is I don't want it to be clumpy. I'd like a nice smooth bond between the cover and the first piece of paper because if it's very clumpy, if there's a lot of big drops, you're going to see that in the paper. It won't look very pretty. And of course, we want this to look very pretty. All right, I'm gonna go this way now. Nice and easy, right there. Hopefully I can get that page. Bam, awesome. Oop, got a little glue on the cover, that's okay, it'll come out. Okay, now I'm going to put something heavy down on top of this again and let it dry. Well, as you see, our book is done. Isn't it beautiful? Look at this leather. And I just love making something by hand that you can hold on to and you can do something with. This is a very useful thing. It would make a great gift for your friends or family or just something to take to school and show everyone you know. And you can say, I made it. You know why? Because I can make. See you next time, everyone. Goodbye.